Hi folks, I have a new microphone, thanks to my friend Nicole. Thanks Nicole, and I hope that that makes a difference in the sound quality of my videos. Feel free to leave me a note or let me know if you find it better or not or what's going on. I did test it and it sounds a whole lot better than the iPhone um, uh, headphones and uh, microphone that I've been using. And that's really, I think, designed more for phone calls than it is for these kinds of videos. So thank you, Nicole. Hope this makes a difference. Hope this is better. And let's take it from there and see what happens. We have a lot to talk about this week. And I was going to do one long video of a number of things, or two videos, one about all the other transits I want to talk about, one the full moon. But I think I'm changing my mind, and I'm going to do short videos on all these topics over the course of the week. Today we're going to talk about the fact that as of yesterday, August the 11th, four planets are now in the sign of Leo. And on August the 15th, at um, early in the morning, August the 15th, for us here on the Pacific West Coast. Um, so, so you can do the math accordingly. August the 15th, we have the full moon in Aquarius. The sign of Leo and the sign of Aquarius are opposite each other. And as of yesterday, Mercury, Venus, the Sun and Mars are in Leo and as of tomorrow the moon is going to move into Aquarius continue to grow in size based on our perception of it it's not growing in size more and more of it is becoming visible and by early morning August the 15th Pacific time it will become full the entire disk of the moon will be revealed everything that I've said about full moons applies over the next 72 hours as we head towards the full moon, expect things to heat up, build up, reach a culmination. This theme of culmination in interesting and different ways is relevant this week because not only do we have a full moon, which is a culmination, we also have tomorrow, and I'm gonna do a video on this tomorrow, the superior conjunction between Venus and the sun. And if you're like, huh, what does that mean? Relax, we'll talk about it later, but that is also a culmination. The lunar culmination, of course, on the positive side could have to do with offers and um, being thrust into the limelight or something coming to completion in a positive way. A contract makes its way to you. Something gets completed that you've been wanting to get completed, etc., etc. So the full moon gets revealed. Something reaches some sort of a culmination or a completion or a peak. On a negative side or on a more challenging side, it can mean that emotional truths can no longer be suppressed and someone has a meltdown or someone has a truth moment or someone decides to have a conversation or someone just can't take something anymore and so things come spilling out and the and the pot of milk comes to boil and things spill over etc all of which as i've always maintained with full moons are necessary and important one of the pieces of caution with a full moon are be careful be mindful restrain your emotions, my advice tends to be a little bit different to say, by all means, if you think that an emotional outpouring is gonna be hurtful or damaging to you or to the other party, by all means, be wise and be measured. But sometimes we need the catharsis. Sometimes, 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 you know, an unwieldy bubble does need to be burst. So, so, just see what it is that is coming to the surface, see what is being revealed, see what is coming to a head. It's, this is not gonna be a long video. We're only three and a half minutes into it. The full moon is gonna be opposing all of these planets, but really it's opposing the sun, which is what a full moon is, the sun and the moon opposite each other, but it's also opposing Venus. So one of the questions to look out for as things come to a culmination Remember, there are two culminations. There's a full moon, which opposes the sun and Venus, and there's the sun and Venus together also, which is a culmination of sorts, because at this sun and Venus coming together, Venus is actually at the opposite side of the Earth. So the entire, we don't see a full Venus from where we sit. but it is a culmination. You're just gonna to have to take my word for it. I'm trying to figure out a different way of putting it. So the planet Venus is involved with this full moon and tomorrow has her own culmination. So we're talking about, as I said, love, relationships, beauty, creativity, art, luxuries, a sense of abundance, money, the relationship between our relationships with people and money, coming to some sort of a culmination. Contracts, meltdowns, exposure to something related to this, some sort of a, 
I actually think I actually think that in some ways it's a full moon of self-possession because I think that I think that with Venus embodying the divine feminine and coming to some sort of a completion or to, into some sort of wholeness I actually think that some part of us stands to within that very quiet knowing intelligent mature in that very quiet knowing intelligent mature feminine way I have a feeling that we will reach a point of growth and knowing self-possession when it comes to finances when it comes to relationship when it comes to romantic matters when it comes to creative matters being thrust out in the limelight some sort of success for some people there but some sort of truth spilling out but some sort of completion a sense of I'm walking away from this table and I have regained possession of myself creatively if you are in the creative profession romantically if you've been romantically entangled in some way somewhere you are coming back to yourself somewhere that divine feminine part of you is being reclaimed no matter what your gender or gender identification okay I'm gonna let that I'm gonna let that sit with you for this full moon and we're going to leave it at that. Now, the one other thing I'm going to say, we're at the six-minute mark. Remember, there are four planets in Leo. I can't tell you, I don't know for each of you where Leo is in your chart. Some of you have my PowerPoint handy-dandy versions of your chart or the Microsoft Word versions of the chart. Take a look at where Leo is and what house it is in in your chart and what that stands for, some of the topics that it stands for. And by all means, if you're feeling compelled to take action in that part of the chart, or indeed in Aquarius, the opposite part of the chart where the full moon is happening, do it this week. Do it by the 18th if you can, because you've got Mercury, planet of communication, the Sun, the Venus, the planet of relationships and harmony, and, and, and Mars, the planet of action and drive in one part of the chart till August the 18th. August the 18th, Mars goes into Virgo. After that, till the end of the month, each of these planets is going to be moving into Virgo and we're going to have a new moon in Virgo at the end of August. And Virgo season is going to be underway. And we want Virgo season to come because that by that time, planets will, after the retrograde in July, really be moving forward and there'll be a lot more forward momentum. But this week, August 11th, today is August the 12th to August the 18th, figure out where Leo is in your chart, figure out where Aquarius is in your chart and get those arrows out in happy ways and Mars, especially the planet of desire and action and energy and drive, is here till the 18th. After the 18th, it moves out of here. But it has all these other planets now, you know, singing along with it. Um, so take advantage of that and see if you can try and bring some of these things to culmination. And with this full moon now on the 15th, really pay attention to the idea of self-possession and coming into yourself in some way in a very powerful feminine knowing way as if some part of your energy has been scattered and slightly hysterical I'm using I'm using a word hysterical that is typically used for women or in feminine ways you know so just pay attention to those pay attention to the idea that feminine unrest has somehow now been processed since November. October, November. And that those forces have somehow, you've been able to, you've been able to pull back those forces and reclaim your power somehow. It could be creatively, it could be that it's a creative culmination, it could be that you feel like, oh, I was trying to become a potter and I finally get what it feels like to be at the potter's wheel and have it in my command. It could be that in relationships where you really felt that uh, someone else was yanking your chain, you kind of finally feel like, you know what, I was able to slip that collar off and they can keep yanking the chain, but I'm not the one who's at the end of that collar anymore. You know, just that kind of... Even in terms of relationships, if you've been challenged in some way, a greater sense of control, self-confidence, 
just just pay attention to how this full moon is acting up in those areas okay feel free to share this video like it subscribe to my youtube channel click on the bell icon so you can get notified every time i do a video etc 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 leave a comment if you feel so inclined um, my email address is going to be in the subject area of this youtube video so if you want to reach out to me for a reading or a consultation or inquiring about rates you're welcome to do so there and i will be back in touch tomorrow to talk about the venus uh, cycle and the venus sun conjunction this video as a reminder four planets in leo again and full moon in Aquarius on August the 15th. Culminations, reclaiming the divine feminine because it's opposite this planet Venus and the planet Venus is actively involved this week. And also pay attention to where Leo is in your chart and take action, action, action related to that and Aquarius and let us make some things happen. All right, ciao guys, see you tomorrow.